and welcome back to lesson 16 of basic CNC programming. In this lesson we're going to be talking about how to format your CNC program. Now after you spend a lot of time writing the code, determining all the tools you'll be using for that job, calculating all the speeds and speeds and just the general process of the job, take a few extra steps and complete your program by doing the following things. Identify the program at the top of the program so that six months from now you know exactly what it was used for. Put your name and date in the top so of course you know when it was written. A good tool description of all the tools at the top of the program. Use good sequence numbers so that you can restart in the middle of the program if necessary and use good operation comments so that you know what each operation is doing. So let's take a close look at a program. Alright, so let's talk about the process of this part right here. We're going to be machining a handgun and we're using five tools starting out with a 2 inch face mill then a 5 8 end mill to remove all the stock on the outside of the part followed by a 3 8 end mill to reduce the corners then we drill the trigger area and mill it to finish with a 5 16 end mill. So let's post this out and let's talk about the format of the program. Alright so here we're looking at the program for this process we want to take a look at the information in the header of this program starting with the program number. Now notice the program number always starts with the letter O followed by four numbers. I want to point out that the letter O and the zero kind of look alike but make sure that the O which is a little bit more round is only used as a program identifier when it's not inside of parentheses so make sure you don't mix those up because that will give you problems. The next thing you want to do is come up with a good name for the program because this name that you put right next to the program number is the name that's going to show up in the program directory of your machine. On the next line you want to put a brief description of what that program does. In this case we machine the outside profile and the trigger area then the name of the programmer and when it was written followed by all the tool descriptions okay um, I would recommend that next to the tool you put a brief description of what that tool does so in the top of the program at one glance you can kinda see what each tool does alright so let's talk about the sequence numbers now when I call tool number one, and this is just a recommendation and that has worked out very well for me, but if I use tool number one, I take the one and I multiply it times 100 and come up with N100. Now the reason why I multiply times 100 is if in that same program, if I call that tool up a second time, I increase that number by 10. So the next time I call it, it will be N110 instead of N100, uh, uniquely identifying that process for that tool if I call it up a second time. Alright, right below the sequence number I put the description of the operation that we're going to be doing, followed by a safety line to make sure I cancel anything that was left active in a previous program or a previous process. Then I always make a home out move in Z to make a tool change and notice on the tool change line I again identify the tool that I'm going to be using for this process because when I'm way down deep in the program I don't want to have to scroll back up to the top of the program to look at the header to see what that tool was. So that always helps me identify what that tool is right there inside that operation. Alright, so then we have the next line where we wrap it to our first start position, we call up our G54 offset, and we turn on the spindle all at the same time. Then the next line we do our G43, we call up our tool offset, and we wrap it to Z1 inch, 
and turn on the coolant. Then we have our geometry portion right here and when we're done with the geometry we call, we turn off the spindle, we turn off the coolant and we wrap it back to Z home position and call an M1 optional stop which if the optional stop button in the machine is active it will actually pause between tools or between operations. So you can see from this N100 number all the way down to this M1 is actually a, a mini program inside of this program. So that allows you to restart in the middle of the program and have all the information that you need to safely run that operation. So that's how I'd like to break up all my operations by tool starting with a sequence number where I can wrap it down or search down for that sequence number and safely restart at that number. So this type of format has worked really well for me in the last few years and my operators really like to see the same program structure so whatever you come up with make sure that it looks the same in every program because your operators are really going to like to see the same format each time they open up one of your programs. So thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified every time that I put on a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.